of course, if you want to a more altruistic society, we cannot have an unequal society. I mean, society that treats people with different levels of respect. So that's true for racism, that's true for sexism, that's true for attitude towards women, that's true towards children, who are the greatest sufferer in all dramas and genocide and wars. And that's true for animals also. You know, another 1.5 million species that we consider totally inferior, just there to satisfy our needs. You know, this is a moral sort of complete schizophrenic attitude. Altruism should contribute to a more just society, more fairness, more universal respect. So that's applied to women, that applies to children, that applies to races. And we can have this kind of thing that we have contempt for part of humanity or even to other species. And it happens to be that what we call the girl effect is the main factor to take a country out of poverty. Educate girls, educate women, prevent early marriage, you know, 13, 14 years old. All the millennium goals will be defeated if girls still marry at 13 years old and they cut an to school and blah, 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 and health and children's condition will not work. So there's so many issues. One of the most interesting one is when we study the decline of violence, because contrary to what people feel, uh, spontaneously say, oh, we are living in a much more violent times. Well, many studies, including the, the summary done by Steven Pinker, uh, when show in such a clear way that you know, if you look at the level of murders in Oxford in 1350, you have 100 murders per 100,000 people per year. Now it's 0.7. Basically in Europe, you have 100 less chance to die of murder than four centuries ago. And even the number of victims at war per conflict average has diminished dramatically since 1950. So in all works of life, racist crimes, violence against women, domestic violence against children has declined steadily. It doesn't look like because the media always points out at the few dramas that happen always somewhere in the world. So among the factors that have been analyzed about the, 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 the likely cause for the decrease of violence, one is democracy, one is people who can freely communicate and exchange because if you trade with someone in another country, it's better alive than dead and the country should be prosperous. But one main one is the, the status of women. It has been shown that if a country where the test of the woman is the lowest, are the countries where the more violence, most risk to be at war with other countries. Why? Because usually that means women uh, women's have no control over their, you know, how many children they want to have. So they have six or seven, eight children that they cannot control, who become delinquent, they are not educated, they don't educate their kids properly about social you know, issues and civic virtues and so forth. They are sort of more countries that tend to be close to each other, ruled by dogmas. So basically, those countries are usually non-democratic, otherwise, because if it's a real democracy, they will give more freedom and opportunity to women. That means those the countries are the ones who are the most likely to go at war and with another country or to have a, a civil war. So the role of women is crucial and has been shown to be, you know, uh, one of the leading cause for reducing violence, education, respect of women. And domestic violence remains the highest cause of violence throughout the world. This, this is everyday violence, and of course wars are there, but this is much more there. I heard recently a case in Uzbekistan where a woman said that she was beaten every single day by her husband for the last 25 years, every single day, and that's not uncommon.